Now then, as uh, the nights draw in and the days get shorter and they get uh, slightly more miserable, it's always good to have a pile of potential projects just so that you go, you can just go, I'm going to do that now because I've been stopped by the weather and the seasons from doing other things. So a few weeks ago, I got a phone call saying, could I have a look at a few wind turbine grid inverters? And I went, yeah, okay. Yeah, let's we'll see what's going on. And um, so there were three Aurora six kilowatt inverters in that pile. Now one, somebody had been in it already and it was a right mess. Another one, I've had it apart and mm, yeah, some of the the back screws or the screws that hold the back on were cross-threaded. Some were missing so somebody had been in that one. But this one, it looks like it's intact. So I thought we could just sort of um, take it apart before we even test it, just to see. Because I have a feeling that, unlike solar panels, they sort of have a fixed output. Yeah. That's how much they'll give. But with a wind turbine, especially if perhaps the uh, the blade speed regulations not set very well or not working very well or even seized up then the output of a wind turbine can go exponential to the point where either the turbine destroys itself or it blows up the inverter and of course over volts or volts beyond its designed uh, parameters are one of the reasons why inverters go and give up. Yeah, either that or just trying to put too much power into them. And a turbine can do that in certain situations. So let's dig into this and have a look. It is heavier than a solar one because it's a six kilowatt rather than a three point what are they? Three point four kilowatt, something like that. So um, anyway, let's have a look. I'll bring the camera in, we'll fiddle around. And there you go, 6 kilowatt wind turbine inverter. Volts in 50 to 580. There we go. Okay, I've never seen one of these before. Well, not to, I've seen them from a distance, but um, now we can really inspect. Right, let's get those covers off. Okay, undone these four screws. Oh dear. Oh, what a mess. I don't know whether you can see this, but it's spattered in burnt stuff. And these things here are varistas. And what they do is, it's blown apart. This one has been seriously over volts because it's these varistors that effectively what they do is they try and um, switch the inverter off if it goes above volts. But if you continually do that day in day out, these varistors are effectively a wear part because they heat up. They heat up and as they heat up, they then transmit power. So yeah, this is black filthy mess. Okay, not looking good whatsoever. Yeah, oh dear. Right, let's have the back off. So I've got all the screws out and I know from experience there's a fair weighty lump on the back of this. Oh dear me. Right, let's just turn this over like that. And I think I'll just move the camera. Oh no, we're not doing too bad. Let's let's move it round here a bit.
There's a lot of black in here. Ah, dear. Yeah. Um, I think we need to be on the other side. But this is toast. Right. Let me just move that that way. And then lift it. I think there's a ribbon. I think there's a ribbon. Connector. But just... There it goes. Ah, oh, dear me. I don't think we can fix this one. Right, I don't think I've seen one as bad as this before. You see this board, this uh, ribbon there, it's actually burnt. Uh, I don't think it's actually worth looking any further. And if you come over here, or if we go over there, we'll see connectors burnt. I think we've had a fire in here. Yeah, it's a right mess. So we look over here, these are obviously some of the output cables or even input cables because the turbine is three phase AC variable voltage variable cycles and it goes through a rectifier so we've got DC negative and positive coming into this lot and look these are just burnt mashed I wouldn't be surprised if these uh, capacitors are dead as well so I'm just trying to get a better shot of this board but black on black is not very useful so let's just brush away some of this and we've got a very good light on it as you can see they're the capacitors and here we are, the scene of devastation. But you know, black and black, as I say, you can't see anything. I'd say all of that is totally toast. And the connections here that were on the board have all melted away, disappeared. Right. Enough said, really. And there's the ribbon totally burnt out so there's obviously flames there or something that'll do sorry about that but um, we can look at one of the other ones and I can show you some of the features because that won't be so mucky so just give me a minute okay here's a better looking board as you can see all the varistors look in reasonable condition not blown apart there's no black muck everywhere and they're really quite some big monster relays there one two and there's another two somewhere else three four yep so it's looking tidy isn't it not looking bad at all I'll show you the other half of this inverter. I've actually removed the cables. So this is possibly worth keeping, but the other half of this inverter was not very good. So let's have a look at that now. So this is the other half of that inverter. That board doesn't look bad and you see these are all field effect transistors or something like that they've all got three legs 
and they're clipped down and insulated from the the case there's a little block on the top that that pushes them now yeah pushes them down right but then you come down some further and you go what so this whole board is toast and you could think well okay we've got a couple of fets there that are uh, really blown apart but then you start looking at the circuitry here and you go what else has gone if I spend time putting these in there's other bits and pieces in there that look a bit toasty yeah so it's like what we could do with it is another board like that but out of the three inverters this board is the problem this is the board that goes poof they've all gone there and that is the uh, field effect transistors I'm assuming yeah so I think the only thing to do here is put some of this to one side for spares maybe perhaps but it seems like this is the board that gives the grief and these connections here are the connections to the capacitors there's a big bank just there so there you go so three out of three totally duff have been over volted or something or too much power going through them yeah I mean it's this whole thing of right you should never run an inverter near its capacity and it certainly looks like these old th these three have been uh, run to capacity frequently so effectively it should have had a bigger inverter or a pair of inverters to share the load yeah and then maybe regular maintenance on the the vary pitch blades so that it can't over speed anyway there you go hopefully you found this as interesting as I did um, just goes to say as I've said you know don't run things anywhere near their capacity we ran our uh, Victron Victor in three kilowatt. Um, I've changed. I've upgraded it to a bigger one now, only because the system got bigger. But the three kilowatt Victron ran for nearly ten years and did twenty-two megawatts worth of power, and never a problem. But we didn't expect it to do its three kilowatt. I'd set it up so that because it's a UPS inverter, I'd set it up so that. Uh, it swapped over to the mains at about 1.8 kilowatts draw so you never ever were giving it loads of grief all three of these inverters they've been driven to their limit and anything driven to its limit after a while just goes I'm not doing this that's enough so um, anyway comments please yeah uh, criticisms concerns as you as in this same old stuff and uh, just nice stories about what's happened to you and I will catch up with you very soon cheers for now